It's the game that almost everyone in North Jersey wanted to see. Ever since Dan Sabella and the Ironmen upset the then number one Green Knights of St. Joe's back in the regular season, you got to imagine that Augie Hoffman's squad has been eager to avenge that loss. The Green Knights of St. Joe's would get just that chance on the stage that is the non-public Group 4 state semifinal. For their winner of this game, a trip to MetLife Stadium and the chance to play for a state title. If you lose this game, you're turning in your paths possibly for the final time. One guy who isn't turning in his paths just yet, Don Bosco star running back Kyle Manungai, who left last week's game with an injury that many speculated would be season ended. He surprised most of the crowd at Denalo Stadium coming from the locker room in uniform. On the opening drive, Don Bosco with the football, but it's the Green Knight defense in a starring role, allowing nothing, forcing a punt. Similarly, Don Bosco's defense would close the door on the Green Knights opening drive. Now Don Bosco with the football once again facing third down. Jake Robbins rolls to his right, and Frankie Monty, the junior linebacker for the Green Knights, throws him to the turf. As the Joes defense in control early on, they'll force another punt. Now the Green Knights to try and run the ball. Instead, Jaquil Batts, the former quarterback, plugs the hole in an aggressive manner. Later on in the same drive, Gabriel Masonette Jr. able to get to Michael Alimo for the sack on second down. Then on third down, it's the Navy commit. Colin Ramos, the senior, coming off the edge, able to get to Alimo and force yet another punt. We would see no scoring in the first quarter. To the second frame of action we go, the stud junior running back, Audric Estime, breaks off a first down run. Maybe the Green Knights about to get a drive going. Instead, Michael Courtney forces a fumble, and Arsheen Giles scoops up the ball, and on his 18th birthday, the senior goes 39 yards to the house for an early Ironman touchdown. Don Bosco up 7-0 in the second quarter. Now later in the second quarter, Green Knights driving Alimo out of the gun, and he's picked off by Constantino Borelli, the senior, who returns the ball into Green Knight territory as the Ironmen might be putting their foot on the gas pedal, ready to pull away. But you know the Green Knight defense is tougher than that. Frankie Monty once again chases down Jake Robbins for the sack. St. Joe's would hold Don Bosco scoreless in the first half. To the second half of action we go. Green Knights to start with the ball. And Audric Estime with a pair of first down runs right up the middle to begin the drive. Before Michael Alimo rolls out to his right and connects with Albert Serrano for another first down. However, Don Bosco's defense not going to offer up much more. On second down, Colin Ramos gets to Alimo yet again, setting up a third and long. And the Ironmen get more pressure on Alimo, who's forced to throw an incompletion. It's time for the Green Knights to punt. But this would be a very productive punt for Sebastian Tasco, as it's down just outside the 10-yard line. And after a series of penalties, the Ironmen would be backed up into their own end zone, and you can't give that kind of opportunity to St. Joe's and not expect to pay for it. The Green Knight defense forces a safety to get their team on the board in the third quarter. Our score, now Don Bosco seven, St. Joe's two. In fact, the defenses would continue to star in this one. Neither team would allow a score in the third, so we move to the fourth quarter. Don Bosco driving with the football. Jalen Berger, the senior tailback, rips off a monster run on the right side to bring the ball inside the St. Joe's 30. And then later on the same drive, on third down, a screen pass. We'll see Berger get inside the St. Joe's five-yard line. The Ironmen right on the doorstep trying to put this one away. But the St. Joe's defense so much tougher than that. They will bend but will not break. Instead, Justin Fry out to attempt a 25-yard field goal that he drains. And so as we move deeper into the fourth quarter, the Green Knights need a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Can Michael Alimo lead a drive to make that happen? 
early on. He connects with Nuri Robinson, who picks up significant yards on the left side. Good for a first down. And then later on that same drive, Alimo spins out of the sack, throws downfield, and finds Albert Serrano for a 50-yard bomb as the Green Knights pull within two. They just need the two-point conversion to tie this game up and pull off the comeback. The entire season for both the Ironmen and the Green Knights comes down to this single two-point conversion. And as Audric Estime enters the pile, the pile moves, but it doesn't move enough. And so with a minute and 16 seconds remaining in regulation, the final hope for St. Joe's is the onside kick, which is recovered by Caden Dana for Don Bosco. And the celebrations begin for the Ironmen and their faithful. In Dan Sabella's first year as the head coach of Don Bosco Prep, he brings his team back to MetLife Stadium for the first time since 2015 where they will face the Marauders of St. Peter's Prep for the non-public Group 4 state title. From Montvale, New Jersey, for Inside Varsity Sports, I'm Rich DeCourt.